So, okay, let's start. Uh, my name is uh, Charles Trupin from the SOSIB in the Balearic Island. I'm the coordinator for the Institute TAC of the Copernicus Marine Service. And now we will have the presentation about uh, the Institute data. I will try to show you why Institute data are very important for the rest of the uh, TAC, for the modeling, uh, satellite, etc. And uh, Fernando here will present you uh, how the data are organized, how to get them, how to process them. And we'll be, of course, available this afternoon for any question, any exercise uh, to, to know how to process the data. So thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Fernando Manzano. I'm working at Puertos del Estado, and we are the dissemination unit uh, for the EV region in in situ TAC group. Uh, I would like uh, to start my presentation with a quote from Bunch, and it says, without sufficient observations, useful prediction will likely never be possible. Models will evolve and improve, but without data, will be untestable, and observations not taken today are lost forever. With this quote, uh, I want to emphasize the importance of the in-situ observations. Sometimes they are eclipsed by the prediction models. And in, in reality, is that the models need us. You need us. You know. <laughs> well, uh, with this picture, I want to reveal the complexity of the ocean. Uh, there is a lot of uh, processes involved, like, for example, the uh, boundary currents, uh, the tides, uh, the precipitation, the atmospheric inputs, river inputs, uh, thermal radiation. There are a lot of uh, processes involved that are altering the water conditions uh, all the time. All the time. As a consequence of this complexity, we have to use a multi-platform approach. That's essential. <coughs> we have research vessels that are measuring uh, salinity. Um, chlorophyll, a lot of parameters, and they are determining the uh, fixed routes for the profiles of the CTDs, for example. Uh, we are planning to integrate HF radars too. They are not yet, but they will be. They are measuring uh, surface current fields. We have gliders too which obtain profiles of salinity, temperature, uh, chlorophyll, oxygen. We have drifting buoys, which measures uh, in the surface, and they are measuring trajectories too. And finally, we have the murines or fixed stations, who obtain, which obtain uh, time series for temperature, sea level, uh, significant wave height, and a lot of other parameters. And now I'm going to talk to about uh, in situ tag globally, the general scheme. Uh, you know that we are, uh, uh, the in situ tag consists of seven components. Uh, it's the, the Arctic, the Baltic Sea, Black Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, we, the Iberia Sky Ireland, EB, the Northwest Shelves, and one, the global ocean that covers the whole region. We are seven components. Um, it's very important to say that we are sharing the same data format. We are using all the data is offered with NetCDF and concretely with implementation uh, Ocean Sites 1.2 version. Uh, in addition, we have the same FTP structure. So every in situ you are going to check is going to have the same FTP structure. It makes it easy to, to query the data. And finally, we have the same real-time quality control procedures and the same quality file indexes. I will talk about them later. Uh, this slide is a work breakdown structure. There are a lot of parties involved. Um, I think it's not, I, I, I'm not going to, to talk more about this. 
but I want lead you to notice that we have uh, a lot of there is a lot of uh, parties involved and it's a quite complex uh, process in order to get all this data from all the regions and put it in a in a common format and to offer it in you know uh, that's uh, the data flow scheme very general first step we get all the data from providers and from international organizations then automatically we apply a quality control process we save in in most of the stages we are saving our our results uh, our data validated in the database after that periodically we are validating product in order to to have a reprocessed product and finally in the last step we are distributing the product uh, you can access data with some visualization tool as like Oceanotron and you can go to our FTP through the Copernicus catalog well uh, I know it has been said before but I want to, to remind you how to do it you have to access, to access the online catalog from Marine Copernicus site and then in next in next slide I want you I want to to remark that you have to check this checkbox in order to download the observations from in situ. When you when you check this this checkbox then the right part of the of the site is going to load all the products available and you have to choose the in situ tag one from the EV region in that case. Well <clears throat> That's the FTP structure. Uh, when you access to uh, our FTP or what uh, all FTPs from in situ, you are going to find a root folder uh, named core. Under core, you are going to have all the products we are offering. In EB case, we are offering the reprocessed product and then in real-time product. So you're going to find two folders. Um, I'm choosing the NRT folder because it's more complete. In reprocess case, you're only going to find the history directory with the associated index file. So I'm going to explain this. You're going to have three folders with three associated index files. The first one is the latest. You're going to find the latest data that covers 30 days of data. Um, under the directory, you are going to have one directory per day. And inside the, the, uh, the directory day, you are going to, to have one file per day and platform. Next one, the monthly, uh, covers five years of data. Uh, some time ago, we have uh, all data there as an historical case, but per monthly, per month, and it was a huge quantity of data, very difficult to manage. We have data from 19 and 20, more or less, and it was very difficult to manage and to create the index files, and we, we take the decision of not, uh, not considering older files. And inside, we are going to have a subdivision by platform type. We have profiler riders, murines, drifters, vessels, and etc. Under these, five, these directories, we are going to have one directory per month. And inside, we are going to have one file per month and platform. And finally, history directory has the same subdivision as monthly. And inside, we're, on, we're going to have only one file per station with a complete data set of this station. And on the other hand, OK, the, the index files, uh, I'm going to, to talk about them later, but contains, uh, it's like metadata of the content of the directories. And on the other hand, we have the MIO index platform. MIO is from MyOcean, so I think we have to update it. And 
has uh, the information about all the stations contained in the in the in situ, okay, in, in, that, in that case in our region. Okay, here above I have, we have an, a snippet of the index latest, is the, the beginning of, of one of these files, in this case is the latest. First, we have uh, headers that are explaining what is content in the, in the file. And here it's very useful because we can check, for example, uh, the product IDs or the file name, very important because here is the, the path in, the, in our FTP. Uh, we have the latitude and longitudes, we have the time coverage, and very, very important, here you can check which parameters are included in each file. This, uh, this kind of, of index files uh, help us to, to check if there is coherence between the content and uh, what we are expecting to have. <coughs> But if, you're, if you want to, to make a, an automatic process in order to download data and to validate it in an automatically way, it's going to be very useful too, because you, ha you don't have to, to go in the file to know which is containing. You can read this file and you know which, what is going to be contained in the, in the files. And in the second case below, we have a, a fragment of the MIO index platform. Again, we have the headers, and here you can, you can, you can see a, a list of all the stations contained in, the, in, the, in, in our NSCDF files. You have the platform code, creation date, update date. For example, you have the la last date observation, so you can read this file in order to know if uh, a station is active or not. And it's very useful too in order to, to know which stations are transmitting data or these kind of things. Well, I'm going to talk about the file naming of the, of the files we are offering. I'm going to, to do it step by step because it, be, it can be a little bit complex. First, this is, uh, this is a, a latest file. First, we have two letters to reference the region Vgram. It can be global, Arctic, Baltic, Northwest Shelf, EB, Mediterranean, or Black Sea. In our case, we are going only have, but we are on, only to have uh, two different Vgrams. That is the global and the IR from from EB. That's the ones we are uh, creating in Puertos. Then we have the word latest, it's a fixed word in order to reference that is a latest file. Then the XX is, uh, is it's a time series or it's a profile file. Then the YY refers to data types. It can be VA uh, data from Bathy messages on GTS. It can be a CTD, a drifting boy, a ferry box, a glider, a mirroring. A uh, profiler, Reco Pesca, a river flow, a TE that are from TESAC messages on GTS, a thermosalinograph, or an XBT or XCTD profile. And then we have the code of the station, the platform code, and uh, the day. In that case, it's the latest one, so we are going to have one file per, per day and per station, so the date is described here and the suffix that is NCS extension of the file. In monthly and history case, it's very similar. We only have, instead of latest, we are going to have the year and monthly date because we have one file per month and platform. And in the history case, we are not going to have any date because it's one, fi one file per, per the station for the complete time series. Well, as you can see, it's not difficult if you have this slide handy. Without it, it's a little bit more difficult. Well, and now I'm going to talk about the in-situ tag, but now specifically of the EB, EB component. Regarding roles and responsibilities, 
Puerto del Estado is coordinating the, the EV region. We are producing near real time uh, validation of the murings. And from Copernicus kickoff, we are leading the wave reprocess development and assessment too. Uh, meanwhile, Ifremer is contributing to the NRT production and validation for Lagrangian and underway stations. They are in charge of uh, temperature and salinity reprocess product assessment too. Uh, in this slide, I want to to remark how many providers we have, and I want to to say that it's a very difficult challenge to to put in common all these providers that are offering data in different ways and acquire all this data and put it in a common format and offer it in, in a common way too. Uh, we have murines, buoys, taigogis, platforms, light ships, river flow stations. The providers are Portas del Estado. We are our, our uh, own provider. Uh, the, e, the IEO, the, Institute, the Spanish Institute of Oceanography, Euskalmet, and Sunta Galicia. From Portugal, we have the Instituto Hidrográfico and the University of Azores. From France, we have the Chom, Metro France, Ifremer, Sidmith, and Seriema. From Ireland, we have the Marine Institute, and in UK, the UK Met Office, Paul, and CIFAS. And Lagrangian and the way stations, we have profile riders, Argo, CTD, riders, XBTs, and other profiles, drifters, and vessels. The providers are EuroArgo, is BCH from Germany, the IEO from Spain, Infirmer from France, the UK Met Office, the Marine Institute, the Schomel, the LOV, and data from GTS, the Global Communication System, the CITATANET for, for historical data, the PLOCAN, Canary Islands, New York College, SOTIP, IRD, Brest, okay, and non-European like NOAA, Bush Hole, and a lot of and other providers that I'm forgetting for sure. And that's the data flow, but uh, specific for EV region. We are getting data from providers. Most of them are offering in FTPs. In our case, we have a database. We get data with a PHP process. We keep all the data in an internal database, different from the other we have in Puerto. This one is, is, is dedicated to Copernicus system. Then we apply a check quality control that we have developed in Java. After that, with another library we have developed in Java called NetCDF Lab, we generate our NetCDF files. Uh, for the reprocess data, we are going to the providers to obtain the validated and assessed data. And then with our tools, we are generating the NetCDF files too. With another library we've developed, the NetCDF index, we are generating the indexes and depending on the content of the directories where we are putting these, these NetCDF files. And we put all together the NetCDF files and the index files in our PU host. It's the production unit host. And then, the, as a last step, we are uh, running a synchronization process to put together all our files and the Ephraimer files, who is acting as the other PU with the Lagrangian and underway stations. Finally, we put all the files in the DU host that is the FTP where you are going to access when you go through the Copernicus catalog and, and, and that. Here I am putting the Xenotron as a visualization tool we, we are offering to. And here, uh, it's not very visible, but if you want, you can check it. It's, uh, it's not internal because you can access from outside, but it's, it's not very visible. It's the EV data portal. It's a page we have gener generated and, and developed. And there you can, you can uh, check which stations we have and sometimes series and, and sign things. We are developing and so it's not finished. The, the URL is <laughs> ebdataportal.puertos.es. So what, what do you want? Here we are offering the KPIs, the key performance uh, indicators too and other information that could be 
useful. And finally, I want to say that we are updating every data every three hours. Okay, not, not historical, but latest are have been updating it every three hours. And now, uh, the last part of my presentation, I think perhaps is the most interesting. The, here I, I try to, to explain how to work with the data. Well, uh, the best option, if you want to, to take a look at the content of one NetCF file, I think it is to use the NNC dump uh, command line tool. Uh, with this tool, you are going to obtain a plain text representation, ASCII, of the NetCDF dataset. It's very useful to, for example, to know how is the structure of our NetCDF files. So I'm going to use it now to, um, to analyze the content of, of, the, of one of these files. For example, here, it's the latest of uh, one of our murines from November. If you run ncdump and then a file, you're going to obtain this content. First, at least the dimensions of the netcdf file. You can check, for example, here how many records you are going to have. In that case, we are measuring hourly data, so we are going to have 24 hours, 24 data corresponding to one day. And latitudes and longitudes, obviously, is the same. After that, we are going to have the variables. First are the common variables for all files, like for example, the time, its attributes, like the long name, the standard name, the units. It's important to remark that units in the NetCDF file, it's uh, given in days from 1950. So if you want to know which date is really, you have to transform it. I will explain later how to do that. The field value, in order to to to, to say which which is a new value, uh, some ranges, and other other parameters or other global attributes, and then we are going to have the station dependent variables. For example, in that case, it's the the significant wave height, the VTDH, and associated with these variables, we are going to have uh, two additional variables. Uh, suffix it with the uh, underscore QC and underscore DM. The first one, in the, in the uh, significant wave height case, it would be VTDH underscore QC. Uh, it's for uh, storing the quality flag associated with data in the main variable. And the second one, it's to say if the data is real time, post recovery, delay mode, or mixed. In history files, for example, you are going to, or in reprocessed files, you are going to find delay mode data. And in the latest and monthly, you are going to have real time data. Then we are going to have the global attributes that are affecting the whole NetCDF file. Uh, here, all the, the, the attributes uh, are general, like, for example, who is the institution in charge of create this uh, file? In this case, it's Puerto del Estado. The date update, the institution admin code. Some of, the, of this data is uh, if, is the same as the data contained in the Mio Index platform. But if you want to read this, you have to open the NetCDF file. So that's the reason because we have index files. And you have here the coverage start, coverage end, another global information. And finally, we have the, the data in a matrix way. We have times, as I said before, in days from 1950, QCs, latitudes, significant wave heights, QCs associated, and <coughs> it, it's real time, or delay mode in that case, is real time because it's the latest file. Well, as I said before, we have real-time quality control processes uh, put in common with all the in-situ areas and, and the validation and assessment of the lay mode data. Oh, sorry. Uh, the QC flags um, has been agreed to in between all the, the groups and zero is for when no quality control has been applied. 
One is for good data, two for probably good, three, it's bad data that are potentially correctable, four, it's for bad data, five, for value change it, seven, nominal value, eight, interpolated value, and nine, missing value or null values. Uh, you, can, you can see that six is not used. And here I'm presenting a, a graphical tool that is very useful if you want to, to draw a time series or whatever you need, you want to, to draw something. Here are three examples that I've created with this ODV, Ocean Data View tool. First one is the significant wave uh, height time series from a marine, time and, and the wave height. The second example <coughs> is a profile that it's comparing the evolution of the temperature against salinity that is referred with the color palette. And the third one is a XY distribution for of a Cora data set that shows how is the different temperatures in all the region. And now, if you want to manage the content of the files, the necessary files, and you need to, to do some automatically, then I recommend you to use a programming language with NetCDF support, uh, as for example, Python, that has a NetCDF4 library in order to manage all the NetCDF content. In that case, for example, we are importing the dependencies, the libraries uh, it's needing. After that, we are loading the NetCDF file. Then we are reading the time values, the temperatures, and the QCs associated to these temperatures. After that, we are getting the unit <coughs> in which these values are expressed, the time and the temperature. This sentence is which transforms the, the, the units of the, of, the, of the dates to the readable date. It's a method from the NetCDF4 library. It's num to date And after that, we are plotting a figure in order to see what we are doing. The result is like this. It's very simple. And you can see, for example, here that it's not well formatted you can read the data. But it can be personalized. The previous example was very simple, but you can do a lot of things with this library. It's necessary to go to the documentation and to see which methods are available and a lot of things. It's very huge. You have here in, the, in this case, more sophisticated, a little bit. We are taking the longitude, the latitude, we are setting a, a figure title. Uh, we are formatting the, the temperature units. Um, we are changing the axis. Uh, we are setting uh, different levels. And we obtain, um, I, I have set a little bit more sophisticated sample. It's that. At least we can read the, the days. We have another title, and that's all. We have a lot of other tools to read data. To be honest, I don't use it, most of them, but you can if you want. Uh, I've used, for example, the NetCTF Java library, for example, for develop our NetCTF lab library to create the NetCTF files, and we are working to to implement a web service to, to read the NetCDF files uh, directly and present it in a website. And, and Python, for example, we are using Python to get data from Sothip, where Charles <coughs> is working. And the good thing is that you can do it uh, in an automatically way. We are running a, a process in Akron, and this process using the Python library is getting the data, is processing it, and saving it in our database in a very easy way. And that's all.
Thank you. If you have any question, I think we are going to be available this afternoon. I don't know if you want to, to add something, Charles. Mm -hmm.